Yeah, we do that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you need to get ready for uh, that. When you select the audio, you like that, then you can assign it to. Uh, All right, so we start from the king, of course, by mistake. Um, my king system is off. Right. Yeah. So you only have clean right. screen. Right. Okay. How do we? How do we set it system? up? Yes. Okay. So here's how to set up a key. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. You've always done it one way. I'm going to show you a new way, but first we're going to go with the way you've always known, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start by using the key bus here to do the chroma key, all right? And the first thing you're going to do, let's just make, let's just set these settings to zero so that, you know, we go through the whole thing, mm -hmm. okay? So the first thing you're going to do when you want to set up a chroma key is you're going to choose the source you want to key on the key bus. So, for example, camera number two, which is in front of a green screen, we're going to set on the key bus. That's the source we want to key. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is choose the background which you want to replace the green with. Okay, in this case, we could use a frame store. We'll use this frame store just to keep it simple. But it could be a time machine clip. It could be, you know, another input if you want. It could be a green picture. It could be, a, it could be anything that is available on this row. On the program. On the program row. Correct. Okay, so, so what we're going to do now is uh, we've got this key, but you can see it's not set properly, mm -hmm. okay? So in order to set it, first thing you could do is look at this options here, normal, mix, normal, mix, add, luma, external alpha, okay? External alpha is for if you're using uh, an external keyer, like an upstream CG, which we're not using in this case. Luma is if you're keying out black or white which we're also not doing in this case. Mix and add. Mix is like, it, it mixes, um, I'm going to have to, I, I want to, I'll come back to you on mix and add. We'll explain that in a minute. Normal is typically what you're always going to use. Okay, so we choose normal because, you know, we're normal. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to select this little key area here. It looks like a little black box or it may have a wedge of color in it depending on what the last use was. So by clicking on that, it opens up this keyer settings panel, okay? Now, I like to start out with my width at 10, just so I can actually see this little color wedge here, okay? Uh, 10, 11, whatever, it's, you know, just low, low enough. With, with which I know which is. Right, we're gonna key her out. Mm. So, so now I'm gonna swing this hue around, and what you'll see is this little color wedge is swinging around here, and it's, I'm looking for this green, okay? So we get into the green, and now all of a sudden we're starting to key out the color that we want. Now, what I like to do at this point is I actually will click on this line on either side. And that, just by single clicking, I can kind of really refine what I'm trying to key. And this is about as good as it gets. I have to make a decision. Do I want it to be a little better on the left or a little better on the right? You know. That's about as good as it gets. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use width, and width is going to get rid of all the green. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all the green. Now what's going to happen is you're going to start to lose the darker colors. Do you see how her jacket's starting to fade out, and her and the shadow inside of her uh, head scarf is is fading out. So I'm going to bring that back with low saturation. So low saturation is going to return those those dark things that I've lost. Okay. If you go too far with it, you start to really see an edge on her. You see that? Mm -hmm. So you just kind of want to get it to where you start to see that edge, and then you back it back off again. Okay? Now, finally, softness is going to get rid of any jagged edges you see, like, on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. So if I bring the softness up a little bit, you know, it starts to, uh, you know, help that out. If you go too far with that, she begins to ghost out. You see how that yeah. happens? But so if you go too far with it. She begins to ghost out. Good timing on that question. The object. Like the spirit of the yes. Now, one question there. Yeah. This, by the way, you want to do all this after you white balance the camera. Yeah. Oh, often? Yeah. After you. It, once you get your camera color right, then you do the chroma key. Right, and so yeah, if you put something green out there, guess what? It's probably going to get keyed out. Yeah. So you know you can go in and try to adjust that a little bit. Or it's just not having any screen. 
or you can try to avoid having green things out there. Yeah, that would be the smart bet. That's where the okay. Now we had problem like with water uh, if you have blue screen, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the, the guest would come with green mm -hmm. clothing, mm -hmm. but she wouldn't like predict the guest would come with blue. Mm -hmm. If we had that, what do we do? Uh, first thing, yeah. First thing, tell your guests not to wear blue or green. Call them and tell them, hey, if you're coming to my studio today, don't wear blue or green. No, sometimes they, yeah, are insistent. Like the checkered, for example, in checkered shirt, yeah. you may have one stripe which is green or one stripe which is blue. Right. And the uh, presenter might have normal. Yeah. Well, actually, you should, be briefing the, the, you should be briefing the guests to dress accordingly for camera. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking. No, 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 no. Just allows yeah. them to come Okay, we had, we had, mm -hmm. we had to in case told them happens, okay. this is the problem. Yeah. But there was still so something case, yeah. which would be green. Yeah. Right. Say, okay, How do we get yeah. Yeah. We can't. Because sometimes yeah. we have very special guests who only care for one day right. and they're very high. Awesome. And for each one, they're very like, you know, um, but you, you know, like I can't tell them exactly. Like, well, you know so what? You'd be surprised because people who are familiar with being on camera. Yeah. Are very no. understanding of that, and they're so used to being so yeah. They're used to that. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid to tell the president, "Hey, don't wear green. We're going to be doing a virtual set." He gets yeah. it. He's done yeah. it before, and he doesn't want to look like he's ghost in the middle. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think the other thing you could do is have a wardrobe here. If you wanted them to wear a jacket or something, you could have a dark jacket that they would wear, or you know, something like that. Okay, in this time, I see the green is not actually. See through. Right. Why? So because because of the width that I have set. So if I bring this width up higher, it keys yes. out. What you want to do is you really want to try to nail down ex the exact green that you have, yeah. right? And I did that. Remember, I did that earlier by setting my width to a very low number, just like ten, yeah. right? And then I swing this around until it's keying out ex the, the the shade that I want to get rid of. Okay. So this is as good as it gets right here at 254. And then I do have to bring the width up in order to get rid of the rest of the green. And then I can bring my low saturation up, which will, you know, get me my darks back and the softness up. So, okay. you know, you just have to really dial it in. I do. No, keep it like this, 45 degrees. You more? Still, Mike, still. This is what it's set up. In front. Mm -hmm. Mike, if you want to set up. If, so Noah, if you had Noah. Noah Pants, for example, use the book, use the book, like use the book that had actual green stripes going through it. Mm -hmm. You could actually yeah, go lower, 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 lower. made out too much. Mm -hmm. You see, you sometimes, uh, Mike, missing, right? Mike, green yeah, sometimes we have this problem is when they hold the book, right? We have we can come accurate here on, on, the, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on the on the presenter or subject, whatever, but. They read books yeah. and then still, then still think we get, we get a problem here as well. Low saturation. Remember the darks I was talking about earlier? When you have low saturation down, all your darks will fade out. Bring your low saturation up a little bit. You go too far and then you key out and you lose your key. But, you know. All right, no, you why can, are we doing this? Uh -huh. Okay, we, we came almost accurate on her with. with Tilting of the book, but uh -huh. she's a presenter. Uh -huh. I mean, the guest. The moment we switch to that person, of course, the key, clear, set, clear setting is out. Right. So usually we have to pause and continue. Right. So what you're saying is the key is set properly for this person, but yeah. when you go back to the other mm. shot, it's yeah. not set properly. Mm. All right. So this is. Uh, yeah, you know, can use uh, one tool, two inputs, and then just assign it to. Right. There is a way to do that, but it's not. It's part of the new keying method I'm going to teach you. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to keying the old way. Okay, mm -hmm. the only other thing that I'll add is that if you're going back and forth between two camera shots, mm -hmm. the way to accomplish that is to use the key preview bus and the key and the preview bus. Mm -hmm. So a minute ago we just chose our key source and mm -hmm. our background on program, mm -hmm. but if you have a second shot or a third or a fourth. You're going to use your key preview and your preview to get to those shots. So, for example, camera one is on key preview, and this other time machine clip or this other background is on, on is also on regular preview. Mm. So, when I hit the cut button, it cuts to the other camera shot and the different background, right? But, Mike, if so you I'm have cutting back and forth. Can you finish?
Yeah. So, so I'm lucky in this situation, except for down by her Mind legs, eight. right? So upper body is fine, lower body not so good. I have to, at this point, uh, either make adjustments again, like low saturation or, you know, on the fly be making these adjustments, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, maybe I need to light the bottom a little bit more, put a put some I'm kind of lighting light down there. You know, you just kind of have to play around with that, you know, yeah. previous to your shot, you know, previous to your show. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. We have to work on every single camera shot. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, can you look? I have been behind the camera. I just wanted to make sure. I see uh, when you did the clear setting on the second white shot, mm -hmm. uh, the first shot stayed the way it is. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been changed. Mm -hmm. uh, just repeat for me for, for, for my understanding, please. Well, it's really all about playing with these keyer settings on whatever camera shot you're on. You know, if you have to make any small adjustments, small adjustments are what you want to do. And you, and rather than sometimes grabbing these, uh, these, these faders, you just click, yeah, click yes. just yeah. click one at a time in each in each way. You know, and that's just very minute changes. Okay. Now you may find that you really like this for this shot. You can save these out if you want. Just drag and drop them, right? And so. You know, you could rename this and call it camera camera one, you know, and and that way you know that, you know, that's what you want for camera one. Now let's go back to camera two, and maybe I'm just going to, it looks okay, but I'll just make a little change anyways. Uh, you can save that out and call it camera two. Okay, so when I go back to camera one, uh, you know, I could just double click on camera one and it takes that setting. You know, I go back to camera two and you know, choose that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's going to be a brief moment there where it's not the same, you know, where it makes a difference or a change. Mm -hmm. But that's as good as it gets with this keying method. So it depends how fast you can click buttons. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. And there's no way to avoid having a small delay in the change of that key. Um, I mean, you can go through and, you know, do macros and stuff where it's supposed to load that. But I've not had very much luck with it being consistent. Uh, so I don't really show people how to do it because it doesn't really work very well. So, so this is the old way. This is the old way of doing it. Now, the benefit to the old way of doing it, the only benefit to the old way of keying is you can have a motion background behind the person. It can be a time machine clip. It can be another camera source. It can, it can, it, well, virtual set, a virtual set doesn't have to be moving. It can just be a static background. But I'm talking about a background that has motion. That's the that's the main advantage of that's using. That's a big advantage. It is a big advantage, but there's a few big disadvantages. A big disadvantage is you have no way to preview your next shot while you're running the chroma key. You cannot set individual key settings for each camera shot like we just talked about. Uh, you cannot run a picture in picture with a live video image over the shoulder. Um, you know, and, and it's you can't really change their background easily. Uh, you know. In a, in a fluid way, which you may not care about that, but you know it can be so nice for you, different effects. Just put motion background. So are you saying that we can't yeah. use motion yeah. backgrounds then? You can use them in this method. For the old, key, for the old but key not, method, but not the new. Not the one. new one that I'm about to show you now. So, Mike, sorry, before you carry on, yeah. if you got two camera shots on a presenter with the same background and a time machine, and you set them on your program and your preview. And when you cut in from one to the other, how would you ensure that the motion background is not skipping at another point? I'm not sure I understand um, what you no, mean. No, no. You, okay, you've got uh, a motion background, and you've got two camera shots where you key in the same presenter on, on the two on the same time machine. On the on same preview, background. On the same background on preview and on uh, like this. program. A preview can see. But she, the the present or the the subject jumps. Yeah, you see the background. That the time machine is running and looping. Right. Is it running simultaneously with the program and uh, the yeah. preview? Yes. 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 The timing. Yeah, the timing. No, the timing is right. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't live on the so if it's the same one on right. program yeah, and preview, it will set figure the same. Correct. And then I've got a question. Sorry. Uh, do you know the settings you save for the different um, key settings? Key settings. Uh -huh. You know, you just save them. Can you save them to the layout? Do you know? How Remember, you, you did layouts yesterday. Mm -hmm. How do you save the layout for like a specific program, which is easier? Can you save those key settings to that layout? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, they can be, they're basically just files, like a still or anything else. Okay. So if you're asking, can they be available as soon as I load a layout? Yes, you just want to make sure you save your layout with them right there. If you're asking, can I uh, double click on something and have it load that key for me automatically? Um, maybe. See, so what I'm saying is, for example, let's say the show's called X, right? Mm -hmm. And I've created a layout that works for X. Right. Um, where the screens go, how do I check the monitors, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And I know I usually cut between three cameras. Mm -hmm. I have three different settings that you just showed us how to do. Right. Can you save those settings within that layout? They yeah. They wouldn't be saved as settings. They'll be saved as those little yes, files. Yes, yes, I'm saying, can you save them. those files within the layout? Yes. For that specific show? Yeah, so if I wanted to call this layout right now, mm -hmm. if I just save the layout, I'll call it X know, layout. Right? X layout. Okay. Layout camera one. Okay, and then you can just use them continuously. Well, you can double click on them for that camera shot. Right. So I mean, that's what I'm asking. So, so if, have, if, if, if you get rid of everything, and yeah. then, yeah, 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 you're going to click, click, and. But you have to, like, yeah. um, touch yeah, the camera, mm -hmm. open it okay, up. Okay, so it's still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not going to automatically load those for me just by opening no, the No, no, understandable, but the settings will right. continue to yeah. be set. They're just like any other file that you can save out. Okay. You know, and just double clicking on them automatically Applies loads them, them to, the... to where they're supposed to be. Okay, fantastic. Does she need okay. to go now? <laughs> she... No, she's no, she really waiting, waiting for, for uh, the does, uh, Tell me, Mike, uh, does light have effect? How you light up the, the subject, mm -hmm. does it have any effect on the chroma key? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it will be for, even if you have uh, stored those things? The, the, the chroma mm -hmm. for certain uh, mm -hmm. like now we've stopped those things. Right. If I change the lighting then, yes. obviously you still have to do yeah. adjustments. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah, we were talking earlier about the, you know, we were having issues before I made those changes to that camera shot with the, her legs down below. Uh, if you light, if you put a light down there, then, you know, I could readjust again to maybe make the top look a little bit better. Uh, lighting has an absolutely has an effect on everything inside the virtual set. You know, the key is to have a nice, evenly lit background, which you've accomplished. Okay, but any changes you make to your subject is going to be reflected in the chroma key. Because again, of like the shadows in her scarf we saw earlier, we had to make sure we got those keyed out, or we, we returned those properly. You know, you want you want to have shadows on your talent. You don't want them to look flat. Um, you know. You'll see a lot of times, you know, there'll be a... Uh, and then, what was what's the reason of you having matte... Uh, Here. Oh, yeah, it's just another source you could go to, a solid color, if you wanted to. Um, you know, yeah, you can come in here and click on this little thing down here and change it to different colors if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the mat, if you right click and you get the. Just click. Just click on here. Oh, okay. Yes. If you go back to that background, see on the left hand side, you've got some things. Do you have to do that? Do you have to repair that basically when you open the clip? Or take that small picture removal? Can you do that? Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, that you can do on your office, you can do the graphics before. And like if, say, you right. said about like this one's doing the cat cane, yeah? Mm -hmm. And Maddox still has the picture in. Is it possible to remove the particle for that? Uh, it might be possible. You would do that in Animator Compositor. You, yeah. you'd, you'd load that clip up in Animator Compositor. Yeah. Um, but it would, be, it would probably be a lot faster for you to just re render that, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, to where that. It's like an interpolation or something on that side, but, but um, yeah, on the, on the touch screen version, it's, it's straightforward, black wood, and because it's on the silver screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, can you play with the focus of the background? Yes, you can do that, and I would recommend now, that you do take your background the background and focus a little bit. At the moment, it's in motion, uh huh. It doesn't look, or any, the time code is not running anything there. Is it running? I can't see much. Yeah, it is yeah. running. Oh, it's running, mm -hmm. but then on the on the, on the oh, monitor, oh. on our monitor here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't know why that. Sometimes that might freeze up. If it does, oh. go to outputs. Oh, it's because I reloaded that other layout earlier. Mm -hmm. If you go to um, scope, 
which will bring up your vector scope and then bring back your outputs. Uh, it'll kick it back into shape. So, are you guys ready to see this new keying method I'm yes, talking about? Yes. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so, when we're talking about this new keying method, we're gonna we're gonna abandon the key and the key preview bus. We're not gonna use that anymore. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to be using the key bus in the way we used to use it. Okay. Um, remember, we won't have, we can't use a motion back as a background, but you can use stills, and you will be able to see previews of different key shots. You'll be able to dissolve between key shots, not just cuts. Um, you can do a picture in picture with a uh, preview source, not your keyed source, but like if she was talking about something and you wanted to put it up in a window over her shoulder it full screen or something you can do that um, so I'll show you how to set that up it's called a keyer frame store okay keyer frame store yeah and since we're not going to be using time machine for this I'm going to use these buttons uh, to bring it up and to bring up a keyer frame store you're going to come over to what we call our soft buttons which are the buttons on the right where you're going to see FS1 FS2 whatever you're going to right click and you're going to choose create keyed frame store okay now it's going to show up as KFS1 on the program bus, or in the preview, all these buses. So I'm going to go ahead and select it on the program bus. Okay? And now nothing happens until I come to this info button down here. Time Machine had loop down below. This one has an information mm -hmm. button. Okay? So when I pull this up, I get a whole other panel. Okay? And currently what it's actually keying is program. So it's keying itself. That's, it's, you don't see anything. So if I change this from program by clicking on it to input one, okay, now all of a sudden we're keying out input one, but we're actually keying blue, it doesn't look quite right. Mm -hmm. So we need to change our keyer settings. Uh, green, I start with 230, blue is 330, but I usually start with 230 on green, okay? Um, and you know, you can bring your width down here again like I like to do with the other, all right? and uh, change your hue around until you're getting the most keyed out. Same principle, just lined up differently in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I keep going until I feel like, okay, well, you know, that's probably pretty good right in there. And then we make adjustments uh, so we can change you know, saturation, you know, width. All right, so we just kind of go through there. All right, now, uh, as far as the uh, background is concerned, we won't worry about the program bus either, okay? You're going to take your still images and drag them either right onto the button or into the background. So if we go to test our effects and then sets, okay, we'll just use Washington because that's one of the ones that's here, right? So a couple things are happening. Do you notice how the, the background is fading in instead of being a hard cut in? Oh, right. cool. Okay. So okay, the, yeah. Hmm. So if we yes. made this a tighter shot, hmm. we can adjust the key. Now each camera, each keyer that we set up, let's go ahead and set another one up. We'll create another keyed frame store. And have its own ind you can independent hmm. keyed settings. So for, you know, let's go back to this shot here. On this one okay and uh, we're going to come in and adjust again the width a little bit you know on our shoulder okay so we like that for this one um, here's the key preview shot so let's go down to key or frame store number two and change this to input number two okay now you can see I'm keying but I also have a preview now mm -hmm. okay and I'm gonna go ahead and change you know that as well now um, what I'm doing probably is moving another card into this box. This box only has one key or frame store card in it. <coughs> I can maybe take one out of those other units and put it in here. Because what it's not, even though I do see a key a preview shot, it's not showing my showing me my keys because it's already busy doing this key. All right. So let's cut up there and see what's going on. I can set my own settings here. Let's change the background a little bit. So on the other one we have that straight shot on this one since it's at an angle we we'll use this shot here right so it kind of makes sense based on the camera shot angle but i'll just show you quickly how you can you know make some some real differences in the key settings just pronounced differences 
you know. So that shot is set that way. This shot is set this way. So if she were wearing a different colored clothes, you know, like you didn't like maybe they did show up in green. Mm -hmm. You could use this method to adjust for the tent, for the guest and not affect the host. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I'll say. Wait, so I understand how those are two keyframe stores. Are those two keyframe stores? So, in, in, in that sense, a little bit of, of, of the first uh, presenter's outfit color would change to get rid of the green if the guest had some green line on his right. This is how you can have two independent key settings mm -hmm. for each person. Mm -hmm. And it's two key or frame stores. Yes. Uh, basically, the, the, there's one card inside the box, right? You can mm -hmm. have multiple cards. Inside of it, there's one in there, and I think there's one in every other unit. Yeah. And that's how you saying there's one because in the preview, that's right. You're not seeing it. the one that's in there is busy with this replacing this background right now, but it is, it is, I am still capable of seeing a, in the next shot here. When I cut to that other shot, yeah, you know, it's basically taking, you know, it has a whole different background image. See how there are two different images in the background, mm -hmm. too. Wait, so this is like camera two, keyframe store two. Mm -hmm. So where's camera one, keyframe store one? Okay. So I'm looking at the information right now for KFS2, right? Oh, okay. If I want to look at one, I can click on this and choose one. And now I'm seeing the background and one. Oh, so, oh, so You're only not seeing it here, but it's right Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah. So, so you apply it to each of the cameras uh -huh. by? Uh, just by creating the key or frame store first, by right clicking and choosing create key frame store, and then going into the info button for that particular frame store. That's in the program. Like, Correct. So not in the preview. It really doesn't matter whether they're in program or preview because I choose which key that I'm going to, which input I'm going to oh, key out. So it could be input four. There's nothing on input four, so you don't oh, see anything. So, oh, so now this uh, frame store one, you can change which input it goes. Correct. As well. Correct. Oh, okay. and here's another feature for this this ver this way of keying. We have what's called a garbage mat built in. So, for example, if you don't want to see this uh, light pole on the right, you would basically take this right uh, field here and just push up on this until you get rid of it. Oh, you can crop uh, it out. Right. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh wow. Crop it. Right, but the problem, the only oh, thing oh, about yeah, that yeah, is yeah, if you walk that. behind that, yeah. you'll be cropped yeah. out. Yeah. So, um, but what you can do is get a really wide shot. So if you widen out your shot where you see past the green, mm -hmm. you can crop so out yesterday. everything. Yes, yeah. because you see so like this, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you limit it because it's not like you can't get it. Just let it right up. Right. Yeah. Especially when yes, you do that for me again, Mike. It's in these six fields here. You would change the value. So in these six fields, you would change the value. For example, I'll, I'll just do right again. I just I clicked in here and just pushed up with my mouse, and you can see it start to creep. You can also type a number value in here if you want. Like I know it's 142. I just saw that. So you know, if you go hard, you, you know, let's go to 500. You'll start to see it crop out half of the screen, right? Oh, and the left, right on the left. Yeah, left is left. Bottom, top. You can crop all of it. Uh, the softness. So if you want it to be, if you don't want it to be a, a hard edge, you can make it like. Let's go ahead and set right back to one thirty. Oh, so you can feather it. Right. So if I set the uh, vertical softness for fifty, you know, maybe it needs to be higher than that, two hundred or something. Uh, there it is. It's actually horizontal. Um, fifty. So you see how it's soft on the edge on that side over there? Yeah. So if I'll just push up on this, you can see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. see, see that? Mm -hmm. yes. This one? That's very hard. Charger. You see, this was uh, an advanced... Uh, Most of them, major problem was... Yeah. That was we the never had to everything. come to you know, key frame yes. store, one key frame store, two. Right. What we, we used to have, like, FS1 okay. frame store, one frame store, two, and then... You right. came up to now, this, uh, okay, the other problem is, uh, I'll show you. Is this, is this, is this, is this, this doesn't have, you can't use motion backgrounds for this method. Which mm -hmm. is yeah. Static. Static, okay. but, that's, but, that's, but that's fine because you guys will start, like, 
Like you got yes, to yeah. back out. Totally. And you can always, if you want a lot of motion on screen, you can right, put a bunch uh, of DSKs. Mike, yes. 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 yes, go to wide angle no, on the I don't know when you're going to start with the background. See, in many cases, we had. In many cases, we had limitations on uh, chroma curtain. Yeah, yeah. We have like two and a half meter wide. Right, it's there. It's coming just. Yeah, I'm getting this pouch on the side. So we can't help. We can't do something with the garbage mat. Right. Or we can. Okay. Oh, Tony. There's it. Okay. This is focus on it again and uh, just focus. Yeah, this much only. Tony. So, you know, the issue is that you are only only have this much green screen there, mm -hmm. right? So if we chose, you know, input one, I'll just take input one for a second. You can see the problem is your green screen ends at this corner. Mm -hmm. So with the garbage mat on KFS1, which is what I've currently got selected for input one, mm -hmm. uh, if I change on the left-hand side, which is where the problem is to, you know, 150 or something like that, you know, you can then come in and clean it up and, Will that affect the image? It would. If you walked out there, you would disappear once you hit the edge of that. Like really? It's it's over top of it. Yeah. I think of it is like a downstream key covering okay. that edge. But we don't have like people walking. Yeah, no. It's really still going to change the whole setup of that. Yeah. More than a lagging carpet was more. Two edges I had. Sorted it out. Uh, but simultaneously, you, you can both, both sides, sides, all four yeah. sides. Oh, yeah. okay. So if I wanted to do the bottom as well, you know, I don't want to see the bottom of her desk. Mm -hmm. I'll just set that for a hundred. You know, mm -hmm. bring that her legs would go as well. Yeah. So now she's floating in air, right? So my collection had the head song. Yeah. With her body. Mm -hmm. This is a put your carpet on top of the table and sit on it. Yeah. Right? And you're oh, oh, nice. nice. So you can like if our yeah. if our table is our last shot, like for our news presenter. Okay, this was uh, me, the most pro, uh, big, big, biggest problem we had because yeah, our changes, chroma yeah. key curtain, if you saw, mm -hmm. is limited to two and a half meters. Mm -hmm. And we had sometimes three guests, mm -hmm. and, and we had to squeeze them in, and mm -hmm. it was very yeah. nice. So you can't yeah. exist for it. You remember from this, then you change uh, yeah. a lot of things. Uh, yeah, with. Yeah, with the, is still better. With the bottom, too, you could build a, uh, you could build a graphic. That looked like a real desk, you know, in your virtual set, and it would just be on top of, it, you know, you know what I mean, like. But she you, wouldn't be able to be on top of the graphic, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, she she'd be behind it, so you would take whatever, you know, surface and set it up in the shot so that, you know, like, yeah. that would be your desk in front. You know, so. Oh, okay. So you could no. have this fancy desk you created, and you could just put a small table. Right. Okay, so okay, right. just right. show me on the effect. No, you could put an original. Yeah, you'd have a real table in there that she could rest on, and if you did it right, it would look pretty much like she was on her desk. You'd have to angle it. But I saw some, we, we saw some uh, effects on yours, which were static background, of course. Right. Uh, one is normal background, other one uh, on the table, where, no, no, no. No. where we could make people sit. There's a round table somewhere. Yeah. Why don't people you have a set maybe. You have everything on B. I have a, I'll put everything on C just to confuse you. <laughs> okay, sir. Mike, can I ask a question while you're going on there? Yeah. So you're saying if, you, if we had to go into the part where there's no green screen, right? the person would disappear from it. Correct. Right? Okay, so yes. you couldn't actually use a bigger set. No, no, no you could one if you, like, if the background picture suggested more of the set. The whole, you know, so, yeah. I mean, so, so basically now you can have Nafisa just on the right there and zoom out and keep her on the right to the threshold. No, no, that, that I understand, from. but I'm saying, for example, space wise, but you, you can't, can't actually utilize more space. No, you could. You, because you can, you can now put the cameras back, like more. It will um, look like more space, mm -hmm. but we can't utilize that space because they'll disappear as soon as they go out of green screen. Is that why you see it? Yeah, yeah, but you must move let's take it this way. Yeah. 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 These, these effects will not work yeah. with this method of key. Yeah. The background would work. So, okay. so if you wanted to put the background in there, you could drop it, the background yeah. in there. Yeah. But, 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 but the effect, effect we, we just take this. 
program uh, for the instrument yeah. and we utilize some effects right. in the background. Uh -huh. uh, we had some problem in a way that there is, I forgot one of the virtual sets which has a round table. Mm -hmm. So we tried to make somebody sit there. Mm -hmm. One camera we would have effect in a way that one is wide angle, one is close to the back. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, the problem was what? The problem was uh, just where the presenter was sitting, uh, where the hand was uh, right. sit on the table, we would take a halo. We tried our best, well, we are but we couldn't get it out. Mm. Um, well, in terms of the halo, that's all about keyer settings. Mm. You know, and that's all going to be managed there. Because on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the main focus, on the, on the uh, TFS, right. it was it's proper, right. but the moment we switch to effect, uh -huh. using like, uh, mm -hmm. one of these is an effect here, right? Uh -huh. And one is uh -huh. the TFS, which uh -huh. is thus. Yeah. The TFS, of course, it would go like somewhere deep, it would give me the wide angle kind of thing. Right. But we had problem with uh, we'll just the chroma. So well, I'm going to go back to the keyer method that you're talking about mm -hmm. here. So we're going to use uh, this background and this camera shot. Oh, so, you know, so we always have to see there's a flicker. Always have a problem. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Was it because uh, we had limitations on keyer settings? Yeah, or? I mean, you just have to play around with keyer well, settings for that. There's no other yeah, way to adjust it. Yeah. Um, Mark, uh, say <coughs> you've got a visual so set. It's a, like a round table. Uh -huh. But if if you if you put it you put it there on the on the frame store mm -hmm. and then you key in the person. Mm -hmm. You know, you find if I want him to be like sitting under the desk mm -hmm. of the visual set that I've created, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how do I do that? Is it possible? Yeah, it is. What you'd have to do is create a downstream key that would be in front of them. So um because I I think we have a visual set background that's, uh, that I'm talking about. Somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere there's one of these, uh, yeah. an effect like that. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not real familiar with this virtual set pack. But um, there it is somewhere there, but uh, maybe. The table, you should do something on color. But the way to have something in front of them would be to cut it out and have it as a layer, as a downstream key layer that you'd run on top. Oh, I'm talking so about right. Days, basically. right. Just like it, just like a DSK. So oh, okay. Uh, no, I understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I did. Three, three, seven, oh, three, I did. Seven, three, seven, three, seven, seven. Okay, so what is the same as of this case? Uh, yeah. FS is frame store. Yeah, then you always always behind some. Yeah. Putting it before. KFS is here. Frame background. And the key from the camera in the middle there. And then, okay, so that's key is, key is key 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 key. Key. downstream key. Let's see here. Uh, what's that? Okay, well, so what's that in MAL? This matte one. Oh, matte one. one, it's a color matte. It's just a solid color. And then out is our program out. So, you know, how would you use that? See how I'm making it look like, uh, you know, she's oh, wow. doing that? Blurring. Oh, yeah. interesting. That's a, a hallucinogenic tea. Right. You see, like, this stuff, <laughs> Mike, remember yesterday I was talking to you? Just... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember yesterday I was talking to you about, like, mistakes that happen oh, with still the system that you can mm -hmm. utilize as production style? Mm -hmm. Right. As yeah, production style, of... yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So, out is taking the program out of the Globecaster, bringing it back in, and creating a loop. So that it's like feedback. That's that's visual feedback. If it were if it were sound, it'd be like holding a microphone up to a speaker. It'd be like kind of the same thing. The flash. Yeah. Uh, let's say it's a movie, what's it called? Uh, what's the original Batman? Batman, yeah, where they drink the, where he makes him drink that stuff and he goes crazy. Same thing. Uh, 
Yes. Okay, and so that's any something really good and yeah. good about the key yeah. setting. Yeah. Okay. We, whatever we had that problem. Well, you know, and you forever you will. It's like the one thing that you always have to mess with. Mm. You know, mm. and there's no, there's no just set it and forget it kind of thing. You know, I mean, there's, I mean, a key or frame store is as close as it gets to having different key settings, and you don't have to worry about changing them. Right? Yes, yeah. Um, but you know, again, the limitation there is you lose your motion background. Mm. Um, but, but that's cool, anyways, because I think we are gonna go towards more static backgrounds mm -hmm. than motion backgrounds. Because in the beginning, I just thought the hub wanted motion backgrounds. Right. Well, he probably um, did, and he probably still does. You know, but the the thing is, you're gonna have to make a decision. What's more important? Mm -hmm. You know, is it more important to be able to? And maybe it changes depending on whatever you're doing. You know. Uh, no, but obviously okay, from your you know yeah, teaching yeah, now, like we can yeah. see that there's much more no, work right. in you know yeah, using this um, method of key, yeah. you know, and chroma key than you know. It's just another way to do it. Giving it all up just for yeah. motion background. It's just an option. You know, some people are going to prefer one way, or some people are going to prefer another way. Sometimes you do either or. Are you all done with your, all the group? Um, I have. I won't say that one way is better than the other. I'm just saying that it has. You have different choices. Mm -hmm. You know. So basically, for this, mm -hmm. that means you'll have to decide now for the news. If like yeah, like if you like if you want to use this this uh, certain method of key, you know chroma keying for the news, but they not have the motion background. Mm. Because the motion background of the news is is the, is you know being used now. So well, like at least you've got two options of key. Right. And uh, we are using the motion background. It's mm. into the news, it's that's no, the sound, so why change it? The uh, uh, problem I told that. you about wide angle and close up on two motions, mm. we can have an four motion. So our problem is solved. But not with this method of the method. The end no, result the is the same. No big deal. The end result is the same. As long as we yeah. have close up and wide yeah. instead of one wide, and then and she's yeah. jumping between close up and wide on the camera. So, so uh, is that problem sorted? And you can go back and forth. You can combine the methods. So if you want to use the old style, you know, and the new style. So there's the old style right there, and then I cut to the new style right there, right? So. Oh. I mean, it's not, they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, uh, and I can change the subject on the, on the other left. Yeah, you can just, you know, set you it. Have completely different. Oh, right. So we can have one camera shot where there is the motion background and this one's like where it's static. Correct. No, oh, that, that oh, is possible, whatever. Different. But what we're trying to do is, the problem was, if we had a chroma key problem on one, when you saw it on one, we would lose know. on the second one. Because you will change it. Now, the because of this uh, KFS, that can be solved. Yes. Awesome. And you're going to have a guest in the same studio and you can put him on a different background and we could basically act like they are in different places in different okay. studios. I'm going to pause and I just want to do a different video. How far, guys?